right, guys, so I'm rebuilding this TM shock, and um, I have the TM seal head assembly on hand. They are available, they're easy to get, but I really want to get this done for this client quickly and turn in and out. He had the seal head assembly start leaking through the standard uh, standard shock shaft seal. As you can see, this seal head assembly, which comes in the TM, is the same that comes in any other bike. Uh, there's not a big difference between this or any other motorcycle. They're all the same parts. They use the same vendors. So what would you expect, right? So this bike had about 100 hours on it. And finally, the seal that's inside of here let go. So it was leaking a little fluid through the shaft, and it needs to be replaced. This is an 18-millimeter shock shaft, and it's a 50-millimeter body. This is an 18-millimeter shock shaft, 50-millimeter bodied seal head assembly. This is an SKF product, but it's not designed for the TM. And there is a slight difference in its uh, seating height. So this one's going to be a little bit lower in the bike, although it's within about a half a millimeter. So they're really, really close. And uh, the other difference that I need to address is that the TM uses these flat snap rings. Okay, so they're not round rings like typical bikes. These are flat snap rings. Got our seal head assembly back, machine. Uh, I'm gonna look it over, over and double check that everything fits how I want it to. I'm gonna blow it off real quick, make sure that it's clean. So first things first, make sure the snap ring fits. So now it needs to go in the shock. These are really awesome, these little seal head bullets. They make life really easy to install parts. Just put a little lube on them. Gotta make sure this is on. Slide that up and over, nice and simple, done. Next up, we've got our piston assembly. I'm confident that this is gonna go together. So I'm, cause I've already done this off camera. but normally you don't have to put all this together to make sure that this fits inside your shock, but we're confident that it's gonna go. So I'm gonna go ahead and assemble this shock. I need some Loctite for the bolt. This is called the Jesus nut. If you forget to tighten it, you'll be talking to Jesus. Most Japanese bikes come with a peen stock. You can't just pull these nuts off. If you try to pull them off, you'll ruin the shaft. You have to machine the threads away, take the peen off so that you can get these nuts off. So we're gonna snug it up. I'm gonna get my torque wrench. Already set it, put it on. All right, nice and snug. None of these are overly tight. Something you gotta keep in mind. They're just correctly tight. Double check our piston, orientation is correct. Piston looks good. I'm gonna put a little more lube on our seal head assembly right here so it goes in the shock body nice and smooth. And this is the trick the way I like to do it. Other shops do it different ways, but I just like to slide it down, put it on, tap her in. 
flip the shock over. Pull this out a little bit. Get this up. I need to push the seal head all the way down past the groove, which we're at. Get a little bit more lube for my seal retaining clip. This is an assembly grease. It's oil soluble. Not like it matters for this particular location. This is external of the shock oil. But this is just to try and prevent some corrosion and rust. Not like it'll last forever. It's going to get dirty and unfortunately that's the nature of dirt bikes, right? So we've got that lubed up. Pick this up, get it across the shaft, and then pinch, push it in. Carefully push down into the groove. Get this bad boy in. Don't know why I'm struggling here. Now, there we go. Nice positive retention. You can hear it click into place. We like to double check it, pull the shock up and out. Now the seal head's in and voila, that fits like a glove. We machined it dead on the money. It's really important that you have that groove correct because that actually expands the expander ring into the body so that it cannot come out. It's a critical aspect and if you don't have all these matching, if you use the wrong parts or pieces, your shock could come apart and that would be disastrous. So now we get to put fluid in the shock and assemble it. There are different ways to assemble shocks. This video is not going to touch on that. Some people use vacuum pumps. Some people don't. Um, you, as a race tech method, we would have already filled this with fluid. I don't like that method, but it's not a bad method. Uh, depends on your shock. Depends on your design. So we're going to get this bladder assembly back in. I've lubed this up. This is where it seals against the shock body. Almost all shocks use the exact same design when it comes to bladders. So you just push it in. Another retaining ring. Same business, we're going to lube her up. Okay, nice and lubed. Going to pop her in place. Nice, clipped in easy, obviously easier than the other one. There's a tool for this but you don't have to own it because we do have this cap on. You very gently are gonna wanna pull this out. Now it should operate smoothly because we lubed it. We're just getting this seated up against the ring and we're making sure everything looks correct. Which frankly I'm not happy with. So let me look at it, double check everything, there we go. So this popped up past the ring, that ring has to be between the body and this and that pushes out on the ring. So now this is correct, now we can put fluid in the shock. Uh, before I forget, you want to smash this down. But you don't have to do that until after it's full and we'll do that later. Um, so that you guys can see kind of what we go through. I just don't want it flopping around, but we'll double check and make sure it's sealing in the fluid sealing after we get it assembled and pressurized. So we'll pop this back up and make sure everything looks good. So now it's time for some fluid. I lightly clamp my shock so I don't have to hold it. You can use badass bicycle clamps, whatever. They all work. Guys, you know, it's funny. A lot of shops all focus on the tool. It's not the tool, man. You guys are the tool.